you're way too expensive. I went with someone else. I got three estimates and you were $3,000 more than everybody else. Just your, your prices are outlandish. I'm going with somebody else or they don't even answer you. Has this happened to you? You're not getting paid what you're worth or you're not getting paid what you feel you're worth. I'm Ron Ramsden, DYB coach, also painting contract. It's happened to me. And I'm going to share five steps we did to get us to be the most expensive painter in my area that I know of. Yes, we get good money for what we do. So what we want to do is you can paint an exterior of a house. There's a lot of people who paint an exterior of a house. In fact, homeowners will get a ladder and paint the exterior of the house. You ever see that guy in a station wagon driving down the street with a ladder strapped to the back? It's kind of tilted a little bit. And now uh, you go, oh my, that's my competition. You know something? He is your competition. Oh, that guy with a satin? I hired one of these guys. The guy with a satin. He had so many drop cloths in the back seat, in the windows, you couldn't see inside it. And he is your competition when people don't know your worth. So let's share to people what your worth is. And what I'm talking about is niching down. You can still paint the exterior of the house. But what do you love to do? What are you the professional at? Or if you're not the professional at, what you can you become the professional at that you enjoy doing that you can get make top dollar? So let me share these five things. And when I'm talking about niches first, it could be kitchen cabinets. And we're going we're gonna to use kitchen cabinets because a lot of people are doing kitchen cabinets. Could be epoxy floors. Could be removing popcorn ceilings. That is a niche. Maybe it's repairing sheetrock walls from water damage holes in the walls hand hand holes in the wall maybe it's that ceiling fixture that had to be changed but if people know that as is your specialty is your niche you can charge top dollar because you are the best around to do it and not only the best around they can find you when they're looking for you so these are the five things number one what do we want to do we want to first go back and i talked about this before in another video and look at all your social media all your Facebook, all your Facebook business. If you have anything with political on there, you want to delete it. doesn't matter who you like or who you don't like. Your customers might not like it. Also, look at pictures, videos you shared, uh, maybe fun times you had at a bachelor or bachelorette party. Those should be deleted also. We want to keep it nice. Pictures of your kids are great. Sporting events are fine, things like that. But we want to keep those controversial things off your social media. And if you want to keep them on, I just have to let you know, you're probably going to lose a customer or two when they search back and they are searching back. Just like you search for someone else, they're searching for you. So that's number one, your social media. Number two, now let's get into your niche. Say it's kitchen cabinets. And I'm going to talk about kitchen cabinets, but niches are all kinds of things. So kitchen cabinets, what are we going to do? We need pictures. We want really good pictures. In fact, your iPhone as I'm recording right now does very well with the kit pictures. I'm here in my shop videotaping something. You can be anywhere videotaping. But let's do pictures of everything. All your prep, your cleanup, your setup, uh, spraying, uh, picture of your shop if it's presentable enough, how you storage, how you handle, how you move cabinet doors and drawers. Let's take some videos. Let's slow it down, the video, so you have slow-mo when it's going back. Let's do timed uh, time-lapse photography so they can see the entire soup to nuts of a kitchen renovation. Let's take pictures of you fixing, changing out a pull to a double pull. So you're filling, how do you do that? Step by step, bang, bang, bang. Sit down on the floor and take a picture upwards of the cabinets. Get on a ladder and take a picture of it down. Take a picture of your guys or girls or, or whoever's working for you in really nice professional dress whites or khakis with matching shirts. You remember, we wanna set a professional Sit, uh, setting right here. We don't want guys, although they can work in anything they want to work while they're working. If they're showing up to do a high quality job they're, and they're paying a high price, they're expecting professionals. Okay, number three, what are we going to do? Well, this is actually three, it's social media and getting the word out, including blogs. So with all those pictures you've taken in uh, the previous, we talked about number two, is what we do is we want to put post great social media not just sending things out willy-nilly we're going to schedule posts if you can't write a really good post we're going to have someone write it for us we're also going to tag different things in there we're going to tag the your your mom's groups you're going to tag the uh, product you're using you're going to do a call to action would you like a, a price on your next 
painting, kitchen cabinet, uh, repaint. What do you think of this color? There's so many things you can do out there to have a call to action and get some traction with each one of these posts. But I'll tell you, the more that you can put out on a scheduled three, four posts a week on a regular, not just one or two or four out in a row, and then skip a week or two, let's have a regular schedule of posts. People are going to start looking for it, and they're actually going to look forward to it when it's a good post. Say so Also, now blogs. So this is 3A. That was 3A. This is B. Blogs. We have to write blogs, and we have to write killer blogs. And if you can't write killer blogs, put down the bullet points, and let's hire someone either from a virtual assistant that we can provide for you, or you can go to something like WeWork or maybe have a friend who can write blogs. And when you're starting out, you want to put these killer blogs. They're called either cornerstone blogs, skyscraper blogs. They're 1,500 word blogs. That's a lot of words. And what we want to do is we want to tell them everything we do. And we want to put it in nice bullet point items and explain every single thing from from A to Z. So when someone's interested, they're going to start reading that. And they're going to read it and read it and read it. And also, you're going to link that to other blogs that you write to, like, what to do when prepping for a kitchen cabinet repaint. Maybe you want how to choose a color for my kitchen cabinets, the best product for kitchen cabinets. What is a kitchen cabinet re repaint going to cost? So start thinking of what the questions the customer is going to ask and write smaller blogs and have all this linked together. If you don't know how to do it, Spend a few dollars and have it done. And if you have someone else write your blog for you, take the time and read it yourself to make sure it makes sense because we are the professionals and we're hiring someone else to do the writing for us in some cases. So we have our social media going. We have our blogs out there. We have all the other blogs linked to these other blogs. So when someone starts to look for a uh, kitchen cabinet painter, which is our niche, they start keying those things into Google. Who's going to come up? us. So number four, you got to network. You got to let people know that's what you do. You got to practice your 30 second elevator speech and let them know you're a kitchen cabinet repaint or you're a popcorn removal expert or you're a epoxy floor phenomenon, whatever your niche is. So they know and they can relate that to you when they hear anybody talking about it. Because if you're a house painter, yeah, we're all house painters. We like to, oh yeah, Ron paints houses, but Ron doesn't want to paint certain kind of houses. And number five, presentation. When you go to sell the job, when you go to the proposal, be ready to sell the job. Be ready to write the estimate while you're there. The customer didn't call you up to wait 24, 48, or two weeks for an estimate. They're interested. They're excited. They've heard about you. You're the professional. You're in there with a beautiful polo shirt. You're throwing a pair of khakis on, and, you, and you're saying, why do I have to wear this? I'm coming from a job. You want to demand the most money and show them how professional you are, so you want to dress in the most professional way. You want to bring a kitchen cabinet samples. One or two, a beautiful common white, common gray, common red, whatever the color is, let them touch it and feel it. Let them fall in love because no one else is bringing those beautiful samples on an estimate. And then sit down, write the estimate, and ask them what they think. It'll be amazing that the questions you can answer while you're at the estimate and you can get the answers that you want. Maybe it's a little out of their budget. Maybe then you can work on some options to keep it in their budget but you can demand the most. I will tell you, when we bring in estimates and when we can sit down and they know all the background of Ramsden painting, that our niche is kitchen cabinets, you would be shocked at how many people are ready to sign on the dotted line. I hope this helped. I'd love to help you some more. If you have any questions, please find me on ron at dybcoach.com. I'm more than happy. Shoot me an email. Find me on Facebook. Send me a message. I'd love to chat. Let's get paid what we're worth. Let's niche down. We can still paint everything else, but let's form a niche in the painting industry, whatever makes you happy, whatever you love to do, and get paid what we're worth. I'm Ron Ramsden, DYB Coach, wishing you well. Get paid what you're worth. Have a great one. Mm -hmm.